Hi folks! Today we're going to talk about muscles that move the scapula. And included in those muscles you can see listed here, we're going to talk about the trapezius, which we have already talked about one time because it's a neck extender. We're going to talk about the levator scapulae. You can pretty well, I think, maybe guess what the action is going to be. It's an elevator of the scapula. We're going to talk about the rhomboid major and minor. Remember, whenever you see the major and minor, that's going to tell you about size. So the major will be the larger, and the minor will be the smaller, and of course rhomboid is going to be named for the shape. We're going to talk about a muscle known as the serratus anterior. Again, you can probably guess if it's named serratus anterior, that means there's probably a serratus posterior. And uh, you'll be able to see when we get to this muscle that the serratus part of the name is telling you about mm, like its shape, I guess. So we'll see that when we get there. And then finally we're going to finish up with the pectoralis minor. Now you may be familiar with the pectoralis major, that's next lecture. Uh, we're going to be talking about the pectoralis minor, which means it's smaller than the pectoralis major and it's in the pectoral region. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the trapezius. Now initially we had mentioned that the trapezius is a neck extender and it was able to pull the head towards the back by using these upper um, these upper fibers here, these cells that are in the upper section of the trapezius. What else we're going to see, um, and I mentioned this again last time um, when we talked about movers of the head, is that the trapezius has multiple grains. I'll try to follow this as carefully as I can. There's a lower section, then there's a middle part. I'm going to use different colors for these. And then there's this upper section. Let me try to actually go with the green here. So, oh, well, it erased. But anyway, you saw the uh, grains running in multiple directions. And so what we're going to see is that this muscle is going to move the scapula by attaching to the spine of the scapula and then also peeking over the shoulder and attaching to that posterior surface of the clavicle or the collarbone. So it's going to reach all the way over the top, you will see this muscle from the front a little bit peeking up over the shoulder. So, can you guess what is this lower portion going to do? What is this middle portion going to do? And what is this upper portion going to do? Well, let's take a look and see. We already mentioned neck extension. Uh, the upper portion is going to elevate the scapula by pulling that scapula upward. Let me grab my toolbar here and it's going to pull that scapula up. Um, this one is also going to uh, what's called upwardly rotate and um, I think a little bit later on I'll show you a picture of that but that's when this inferior angle rotates up and around and that happens when you lift your arms overhead. So if I could draw an arrow, we're going to move this little bottom point right here. And when you move your arm up above your head, like you're reaching for something over your head, the scapula goes like this. And this helps to elevate and also upwardly rotate the scapula. Now, uh, in addition to that, the middle portion is going to retract or adduct the scapula. Now I wanted to talk to you real quick about what's the deal with this retract or adduct. How can we use that? Well, normally um, retraction is, as we know, a posterior movement moving towards the back, but you're kind of staying in a transverse plane. Um, for the scapula, that is also the same thing as adducting it, because as the scapula moves backwards in a posterior plane, it also moves medially. So um, for the scapula, these two are synonyms. It doesn't mean they're synonyms all the time, but for the scapula they are. So that middle portion is going to retract the scapula or bring it closer towards the midline, which is where the origin is. And then finally, the lower portion is going to depress the scapula. Um, it's going to like pull the scapula downward, not just as a function of the opposite of elevation, but if you're thinking about if you're carrying two really heavy buckets or two really heavy bags, how your shoulders will sort of move downward to accommodate the weight of those really heavy things that you're carrying with your hands, of the, your hands are kind of weighted downward, your scapula will be depressed. Now I put in the PowerPoint a link to this particular website and I want to take you there real quick 
It's called getbodysmart.com. So, I don't know if I'm going to... Oh, of course. Um, aha, here we go. So what you're going to do when you get there is you're going to click on the muscular system. And you might get this. I don't know if you're going to get those or not. Then you want to go to muscles that act on the shoulder or the scapula bone. I don't really... You know how I feel about this term. You want the scapula bone. Yep. And then here's all these muscles. So we're talking about the trapezius. Click on that. And then, check it out, it's going to strip away all the muscles of the trapezius and put them back on. And you can actually see how everything kind of overlaps. So I'm going to click the minus and watch as things are starting to disappear. Gone, gone, gone. Everything's going away. And we're left with just the trapezius. You can get rid of that too if you want. Origin and insertions are marked in the red and the blue, kind of like my skeleton. And then you can have just a plain skeleton. So I want to leave it like this. Blah, blah. It tells you about the origin and insertion. And then look, if you click on it, it's like, oh, I forgot what it means to elevate. Ooh, look at it. It's elevating as it's um, kind of this little tiny picture here. What's upward rotation? See how he, well, he can barely show you, but it's lifting that arm out to the side. Does neck extension. See, he's pulling his head towards the back. Adduction towards the midline. Notice it says retract. Depress. All right, so those, that's a great website for you to check out. And it has, of course, all the muscles that we're going to learn. All right, so there's the trapezius. Now, next on our list was the levator scapulae. And you can see that muscle's already labeled for you right here. So what we're going to see is that it's attaching to the transverse processes of these um, cervical vertebrae here, C1 through 4, and then also onto this, um, it's not quite the superior border, it's like the upper end of the medial border, but like right here. And so what are we going to get? Levator scapulae. If we have an origin here and an insertion here, and I to O, that's our rule. We're going to get elevation, elevator, levator, elevation of the scapula. Excellent. Elevates the scapula. Check it out. It's right in the name. Easy. Now, also on this page are two other muscles that we can see right here. One right there and one right here. So I'm going to outline one of them so you can tell the difference. Let's go like this, and, uh, okay. oops, a little too far. Yeah. Okay, there's one, and then the other one is going to be up to here. You can clearly see those two. Now, if you have to guess which one's the major and which one's the minor, well, it's already on the page for you, but you can tell this one, the bigger one's the major, the smaller one is the minor. This is one of the ones we talked about in class as an example, and this one is going to... Here's the origin. Here's the insertion. It's going to move the scapula actually in two directions. So it's going to pull the scapula inward, which is adduction or retraction, you can say, of the scapula. But it's also help going to lift um, the scapula upwards. And so what you get is elevation and retraction. I hope this is getting easier for you. So there's three couple more to go. There's serratus anterior. I hope this looks familiar. This is another one of the muscles that we had um, used as an example of how muscles work. And so what we have here for serratus anterior is the serrated edge, which is why it's called that, like a serrated knife or sawtooth is what that means. Okay, so it's ooh, a little messy there up here too we can't see. Its origin is along the lateral surface or the external surface of the first eight or nine ribs. Some people it's eight, some people it's nine. I wonder what you have. I wonder what I have. So origin all along here and the insertion, gotta check this out really carefully, is along the medial border of the scapula but on the anterior surface. So what that means is that this muscle separates your rib bones from your scapula bone and goes between them. Um, so if we draw our I to our O, I'll try to follow the grain here, sort of-ish, like this. 
this. That's going to pull the scapula forward. And what we're going to get also, notice how some of these grains kind of go up and around. This one's going to help with upward rotation as well. So I've got a couple of extra pictures here. This one is showing you the serratus anterior from the anterior view. So here we had a lateral view. Now we're looking at it from the anterior view. The pectoralis major has been cut away. We'll get to that later. Deltoids out of there. Here's pec minor. We'll get to that later. But right here is the serratus anterior. And it's going to go kind of around, around, around that way. And then all the way be underneath all this, what we can't see. Oops, how did I just do that? Good Lord. Undo, undo. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Let's see if I can undo that. Ooh, I fixed it. I just did something real crazy with my screen and I didn't even know it. But anyway, this guy's going to go way around and hook to the anterior surface of the medial border. And so here's, again, the left scapula, this scapula that would be right here. Here it is. This orangey color is showing you where the insertion is. So it's going to pull the scapula away from the midline. I hope I said this earlier. Away from the midline, which is abduction, or you could also call it what? towards the front protraction of the scapula and it's also going to help with that upward rotation when you lift your arms overhead it's going to help the scapula rotate so we can change the position of the glenoid fossa kind of upwardly so it's going to take that inferior angle and it's going to move it kind of forward and up okay that's called upward rotation and really this is the only time we're going to see that whole upward rotation okay and our last muscle for today is called the pectoralis minor. Now on our picture here, pectoralis major has been removed or cut away. Um, it was attaching all along here and here and here. So what does that tell you? Pectoralis minor is underneath. It is deep to pectoralis major and it's much, much smaller. This one is a little drawn a little differently. It does generally have that sort of little serrated edge to it. Um, we see it over here. They drew it a little different, but pectoralis major again was taken off so we can see. Actually that's deltoid. Here's the insertion. Okay, so pec minor. What is up with this little dude? Um, let's see. This is the insertion up here. Can you remember what that part of the scapula is called? Think about it. I'm going to draw in the origin. You think about what the insert insertion point is called. The origins on these ribs here, two through five, two, there's one, two, three, four, oh, two through four. And this thing's called the coracoid process of the scapula, not the acromion that touches the clavicle, the coracoid process. And that's going to move in this direction. So what do you get? Well, we're going to try to pull that scapula around towards the front again. So it protracts or abducts the scapula protracts or abducts by pulling on the coracoid process so of course it's going to work with the serratus anterior okay little bit of review so what do we got here this big 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 sort of half diamond shaped muscle is the what is it not sure I don't know either yes I do um, if you don't know, pause and look it up. This is the trapezius. I'm just going to write an abbreviation. The abbreviation many people use. The traps. Okay, so if that's trapezius, on this side we've kind of cut away the trapezius because all these other muscles would be underneath. So we have one here. Look which way it's going. That's levator scapulae. We have one here, and then we have a big guy right here. Da, da, da. So this one, this arrow is over here, that's rhomboid. Which one? Major or minor? Minor. And then this one right here is going to be rhomboid major. Which one are we missing? One of these we're not showing on here. Uh-oh. 
We're missing one, pectoralis minor. Not showing because it's on the anterior surface. So there you have it, folks. The movers of the scapula, trapezius, levator scapulae, rhomboid major and minor, and I feel like I'm forgetting one, serratus anterior and pectoralis minor. Thanks. Have a great day. See you later.